I think we have to thank the uh, the high tech. Otherwise, we won't be able to uh, talk or listen from far away. Uh, I'm sure some classes they can have the place occur the event. I mean, in Houston, but their audience could be far away from like in Europe. Can you believe that? Or in New York. So we have to thank this high tech. All right. How many times do I have? How much time do I have, I have to finish by? Oh, we can go till 11. 11. We can go all the way to 11.30. Oh, okay, it depends. <laughs> okay, today I want to share with you um, the sutra in 42 sections. Some translate in uh, of 42 section. I don't know which one is better, but many, many it says sutra in 42 section. Any differences? The in and the off. Okay. Okay. So now he won't move. Yeah, I think you need to overall merge. Uh, so let's try this. Uh, F5. Okay, let's go to slideshow. Why'd you doing that? I looks like, oh, there you go. Looks good. Okay, so, so now, now this should work. There we go. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> it's a, not my computer. <laughs> It's like a different generation. Okay, first, uh, it's the general introduction. I want to share with you why we, we want to talk about this sutra and how did this sutra come to here? Okay, uh, first, this sutra totally, it says, in 42 section, that means they are totally like a 42 chapter. Okay, but each section is very short, very concise, um, easy to understand. And the style of the sutra, the way of it put it is different from the one you used to, you know, you start with, thus have I heard, right? Usually you start with, thus have I heard, but it, this is said, the Buddha said, right? It says, the Buddha said, it's just like in China, we have the Confucius, right? And they always say, Zye, that means the master said. So that's the difference. And because of the different style, different construction, so some people will say, oh, this is not, the sutra, this is a fake. Uh, you guys, uh, you Chinese make it up. And, but later on from a lot of um, written and a lot of study, uh, even the uh, many papers, some Chinese scholars say, well, it's not, it's fake. But you, you guys know there is a very uh, highly respect monk, his name is Yin Sun, Yin Sun Dao Si, you heard of him? And he, he studied and he studied and he, he, he had this paper written and says, for sure, this is the, the, the sutra. And it was coming out from Buddha saying, okay, so you guys just relax. This is a true sutra, okay? Don't worry about that, it's true or not, okay? So I want to, because some some people, they probably read about that and then say, oh, what are we talking about? This is not a true Buddha's teaching. But sure, this is Buddha's teaching, okay? Now, inside the sutra, they don't talk too much about the theory, the argument, the metaphysics, and they provide uh, instruction for the beginners, okay? Uh, tells you how to be a better person, how your daily life should be, and how are you going to uh, away from the unwholesome stuff. So it's, it's, it's for the beginner, 
And so maybe 30, 40 years ago, uh, all, the, all the temple, their morning class, their evening class, they change the sutra because this is the basic, you know, basic, basic, but it's not, says it's not going to uh, allow you to become enlightened. Yes, if you follow this, for sure, uh, you are going to purify yourself. You're going to practice meditation and you listen to the teaching and you practice four normal tools. For sure, you're going to become enlightened too. So, okay, uh, follow this sutra, okay? And they also emphasize on the importance of eradicate desire, you know, like a three poisons, hatred and illusion. <clears throat> and uh, remember also, a lot of parts says you have to observe precepts and practice the four normal truths because the four normal truth it really is the the frame of how ordinary people become enlightened and because of the explanation of how human being is reincarnation and suffering and not satisfied with their life and how are they going to get out of this cycle? You know, life and death, life and death. How? Because sometimes we don't feel that unsatisfaction. Like we are going through life and death. Have you ever feel like I'm in this big ocean, you know, up and down, up and down, life and death, life and death. Have you ever really feel that? You do? Good for you. Because that's that's very important. If you really feel this is this is something that I really don't want, I want to be out of this cycle. Then you really you you will try to to figure out what is the remedy, what is the the, the medicine I can take, what is this a cure? Okay, so that's the four normal truth about. Any of you never heard about four normal truth? Everybody heard about it. So it, it's the really basic. If you really are a Buddhism and you, you don't know, I don't know what is the four normal truth. Well, then I'm sorry. You need to go back to read the, the biography of uh, Shakyamuni, the Gautama Siddhartha. Okay, you need to read he, he, what happened to him, why he became united, why he became a Buddha. Okay. Okay, now the next part I want to share with you is this. Allusion of, am I pronouncing it correct? Allusion, allusion of Buddhism in coming to China. This is a very interesting story, okay? Uh, in 60 AD, right now it's 2023, right? Way back, 60, okay? 0060, there was like 2000 something years ago. And there was uh, Han, 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 Han Dynasty in China. And the emperor, me, his, his main emperor. And one day, one night, he uh, dreamed a gold man. Uh, so the next, next morning, and he was in with all this minister. And then he wanted to share with them, I dreamed of this gold man. What does that mean? You guys tell me. So there are so many people, they are very knowledgeable and they are like, they are historian, court historian. And they will, they read a lot of uh, written uh, uh, recording uh, from years, years ago. You know, in Chinese history, every dynasty, they have a court historian. They will put down what the, the king do what the emperor do what did he what did he did what did he, who he killed what kind of war he was involved they put down everything every single thing okay that's the historian the court historian it's a very important position there so then the historian comes and says okay uh, we think you dreamed uh, uh, a saint a, a god from west because from the, the written uh, said in Zhou Dynasty, there was like a, 
way back like 1,000 years ago from Han Dynasty. And it re, re, uh, written like this. The Zhou Zhao Emperor, his years, 26 years during that time. And one time the earth moved, it's like an earthquake, but there are so many uh, colorful light and it was shining. So then it was said, it, there was the great saint was born in West. And after 1000 years, then his teaching will come to China. So they put it down, carved it in stone and buried it. Okay, so from that recording, so this historian tell the emperor, okay, this is a very good sign. Uh, see from then on to now is about 1000 years. So uh, apparently then the, the, the scent is coming, the teaching is coming. So then, okay, the emperor is so excited and waiting. Then wait for four years, right? 64, he cannot wait any longer. So he just sent 80 ministers uh, to find the scripture from the West. So those guys, okay, they, they went out, of course, maybe with some horses and then a walk and all the way to the Middle Asia. Nowadays, like Afghanistan, okay, way over there. And they met two Indian monks. The name is Kashapa, Kashapa, Ka. How to pronounce that? I really don't know. Kashapa. And then Dhamma, Dhamma Ratha. Okay. Let's just go like that. Okay. Whatever it is. <laughs> it's either Sanskrit. Okay. Or Pali. Maybe Sanskrit because Pali don't have this sutra. So then invited these two monks and then apparently they promised, okay, we'll go there. Because those two monks, they are very knowledgeable and they have, uh, they have very, uh, they achieved hiding from Buddhism. So they promised that, okay, we're going to go to China and lo they love to propagate, uh, talk about the Dhamma. So three years later, can you believe three years? Because they have to walk. There is no motorcycle. There is no car. Uh, maybe just. I don't know, they, they, they don't use camel, no, they just walk. So it took them three years to get to Luoyang. That was the capital of uh, Han Dynasty. So finally they arrived. Ooh, what, how, that's a great news. So then <clears throat> here is this story, the white horse. They have this white horse and carry lots of uh, sutra, lots of uh, Buddha statue, and maybe some relics and go with them. So finally uh, they arrived. And then so they, where do they stay? They stay in a temple, you know, in, in, uh, in, the, in the past, the temple belongs to the royal, uh, the royal palace. So it's like a guest house. They stay there. <clears throat> And it was called Long uh, Honglu, Honglu Temple, Honglu Temple. And because of, of the white horse, so they call, they renamed the, the temple, the White Horse Temple. And it's very famous in China. Um, So then we consider this white horse temple is the first, the number one temple after the Buddhism in coming to China, right? Because that's the first, first one. Before that, there's no formal temple. Well, this is from Google. I Google it and it, it looks okay, right? But reality, during the Cultural Revolution, you heard about Chinese Cultural Revolution, it was terrible, it was destroyed. Those young teenagers, they destroy everything, it's old. They, they, of course, they destroy the whole temple and everything and it was rebuilt. So this, I believe this is rebuilt, okay? 
And inside the temple, there are so many good statues and uh, scriptures. They are all destroyed. And one time there was guests that want to come in to visit this temple. So Zhou Enlai, you know who he is? Uh, he says, okay, let's get some other stuff from other temple and put it in there and, and just, just keep it there and stay there uh, because it's nothing in there anymore. So the cultural revolution is terrible. Okay, so this is, if you go to China, when you get a chance, go to visit this White Horse Temple because it's, it's very, it's a historian, uh, very remarkable place. All right, and so those two, those two uh, monks, they, they start there and they started to translate. They know Chinese, but also, also they had to get help from the Chinese scholar. They helped them, but it's just a few people. It's not a big organized group of people to help them to do this translation because this is just the first time uh, happened in the history for uh, the sutra to be translated from Sanskrit to Chinese. So they totally, those two monks, they totally translate about six, from re record says they totally translate about six dif different sutras, but only this one survived, saved, remained, because afterwards there are so many in China, there are so many wars and, and it's, it's all gone. And so this is from Google again. The two monks, look at their appearance. Does not look like Chinese, right? But they're, you know, they're wearing, I think that's Chinese style. Indian, they have only three cloths, right? Um, if you, if you seen the, uh, the monk, the Theravada monks, they're wearing, it's not like this. This is Chinese style. Okay, so apparently when you come, come to the China, they are offered this kind of attire. Okay, they have to wear this. All right, now next part we are going to talk about the sutra. And the sutra, if you study in the past, you know it it was divided. Every sutra has three parts. The number one is preface. The number two is like a main, main, uh, main con content. It's authentic, it's the main content. And the, the last part usually is the circulation part. And so the preface is just like um, introduction. Talk about how, what is the origin of this sutra? Or what is the summarize of this content? What is it really talking about? and it's like the head. And the main content will really in detail about what, what it's all about, what, what we are going to talk about in this sutra. It's like the body. And then the last one is like our feet and the walk. And so this sutra will circulate to other places and go to outside of, outside of China, something like that. So it's like a feet. So it's a head, the body, and the feet, the three parts. Uh, preface and main part and the circulation part. And so before we start, we need to take a look at this preface, the first part. So the first part, uh, it has some stay, uh, say it. Uh, I just summarized it. Uh, number one, it says, when Shakyamuni, he attained the uh, Buddhahood and he contemplated that destroying away from desire and coming on our mind with the most supreme important factors. Because from his own experience before he become enlightened, he has a lot of unwholesome part inside him. So he needs to use a lot of uh, guideline by himself, stay away from a lot of uh, bad things and always continue with the wholesome stuff. And number two, he did a lot of uh, meditation. He reached a very high level of concentration uh, and he will be able to see through the 
the world. So he will be able to become enlightened because he also, from previous lives, he listened and he studied. So he, he gained a lot of uh, wisdom. So he will be able to see what's the truth of this, this world and be in, including our life. And number two, he says, to say, stay in deep meditation, deep concentration will enable ourselves to conquer all the demons. You know, from his, his own experience, there, there is the, you heard about the Mara, right? The Mara is the big guy from the heaven. We have so many layers of the heaven and he always come down here to disturb him. He does not want anybody to become united because he wants everybody to enter his control. So first, if you read his biography, you know, first, the Mara sent his beautiful daughters try to do the Gudama, and it won't work. And so then he sent a lot of armies, you know, the soldiers and all kinds of stuff and tried to scare him, didn't work. So because Godama, Godama, he has very high level of concentration and, and wisdom. That's why he will be able to stand still like a stone and is not disturbed by inside demon and outside disturbance. So he, after he become enlightened, he said, this is very important to, if you stay in the concentration, it helps you. The, you will conquer all the uh, demons. And then the third one is a turning Dharma wheel of four normal truth in Deer Park. You know where is the Deer Park, right? In ancient India, there's a northern part of the India. And, and he talked this four normal truth to the five lay person. And those five lay person finally all become united. And so he said, if all the monks, all the PQ follow his teaching, they, every single one, all become enlightened. And all of them join palms to thank him respectfully. Okay. So this is what he said in the preface. Okay. Here comes the summary. That's my own summary. Okay. Uh, you can share your your opinion too. Okay, number one, I said Chinese used to have the Taoism and Confucius, right? So they listen to their their theory, their teaching. Buddhism is like foreign stuff coming out from India, but because you heard about the history from the Han Dynasty. The emperor was so supportive. You know, there is this interesting story become Taoism and the Buddhism. The Taoism, they are so upset because the emperor is so crazy about the Buddhism. And all the Chinese, they, they uh, including the, the people in the palace and uh, outside the civil, uh, the people, they all uh, become... Buddhist, and everybody is crazy about that. So they are so upset. They said, "No, this is cannot cannot go on like this. We are going to lose our lose our power. We're going to lose our benefit, and we're going to lose everything." So he he want to challenge the Buddhism. So he the two leaders went to the emperor and says, "We want we want to challenge. It's called Battle of Wits." So then the the emperor says, "Okay." Okay, in front of the White Horse Temple, two places, one for Taoism, one for Buddhism. They say, okay, our sutra is powerful. Oh, okay, so they put all the Taoism, okay, uh, they put all their stuff and they're, they're saying uh, their sutra on, on, piled up on this side. And the other side is the Buddhism. They just put uh, whatever they got the sutra and, and there too. And so they used the fire. 
they burn, they want to burn. They, they say, okay, let's see who is, who, who is better. So both sides, you know, the, the emperor come and they have some, some people come to, 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 to supervise, make sure that it's no tricky there. Okay, so they both sides burn their sutra. The Taoism, their sutra all burn down to ashes. They, yes, they continue to, 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 to chant their mantra, to continue try to save those sutra down to ashes. And this side also, they burn their sutra. The sutra shining with all kinds of light. It's totally different, right? And the two monks, one has super nature power, go, go up in the air and do whatever he can do, upside down and right and left and do all kinds of stuff. And then the other ones start to talk about the Buddhism, talk about the Dharma and encourage people to, to, to become a Buddhism. So of course, this, this side is failed, right? But well, beaten, failed. So one of the leader was so upset and, and passed away. And then the other side, because people look at that, they just shocked. Okay, so many, many people, over one over one thousand people, they say, "Okay, we want to give up our household life. They want to become either monk or they want to become a nun." And it was permitted by the emperor at that time. If you want to live household life and become uh, homeless, you need to get permission from. The, the emperor, you cannot say, okay, I want to shave and, and, and become a monk. No, you cannot. You have to get permission from the, the emperor. So become, it, it's so many, many people. So they, the emperor built 10 temples for those people, seven for the, the, the male, three for the female. So the emperor was so support, very supportive, right? So that's what I say. The Buddhism will be able to stay and rooted in China is because the emperor so supportive and because we have so many wonderful, good, uh, trained, achieved monks come to do all kinds of translation and also give the, the teaching. That's the two factors. That's why the Buddhism can stay and rooted in China. Otherwise, we used to believe in Taoism, okay? Never heard of Buddhism. And then number two, my, my way of thinking is also because of Buddhism changed some Chinese concept. The Chinese does not believe does not talk, especially like Confucius, never talk too much about death because he said, we need to study, we need to find out more about the life before we really understand the life. We are not going to talk about death. And then there's one saying says, people, they always, like, always say like this, people die, they become ghosts. But from Buddhism, people passed away. There are six different realms that we can go to. It's not everyone become ghost. Okay, so that's the different, different concept. And there's one that says, death is like a lamp going out. In Buddhism, this is what kind of uh, wrong view? Death is just like a lamp going out. That means what? Can you read that? Death. Death is like a lamp going out. Mm -hmm. Like you, when you passed away, nothing, uh, nothing left. That's it. Period. No karma. No karma. Nothing. So this is one kind of the uh, wrong yeah. view. Wrong view. It's called Naya. Nihilism. 
Okay, that's another wrong view. Ah, okay. But China, uh, in Buddhism, it says everything goes on. It never stops. It's just on and on and on and on. It's like a wheel. So it's like in the ocean, you're up and down, up and down. It just the reincarnation for non is non-stop until you become enlightened, you're out of this cycle. So this is another way to change the Chinese way of thinking. See? All right. So really help the Chinese to have this uh, right view about the life. Okay, let me see another something. Oh, understand more correctly, understand about the cause and effect. Okay. Um, many think, love to have some people tell you what is going, so I mean, to tell um, Martin, Martin Taylor? Fortune Taylor. Fortune thank you. Fortune Taylor. Always want to have some somebody tell me what what will I be? Do I am go, am I going to be rich? Uh, is this a, will be a good marriage? Should I marry her or should I ma uh, marry him? They will go to the fortune teller to tell them. Uh, they they don't know what to do themselves. So then. In Buddhism, they didn't say that. They, they don't believe in this. It's, everything is your in your own, own hand. You can have a better life. You can have a miserable life. All depends on your way of thinking and the way you behave, the way you think, and the way you do. So this, I think this is uh, what the Buddhism affects the, the Chinese. And I think it's a it's a very good, it's a, it's a good thing that, that we have this Buddhism in, in, in China. But then the, the factor changed. The, commun the communists take over. They really don't want people to too crazy about this religion because with religion, you have a lot of people gather together and they are afraid something is going to happen with this big group. But I don't know the Xi Jinping, how, what is he going to do about the Buddhism, okay? And then from then on, there are so many translators, uh, the Western people, they, they read uh, European, they read about the Buddhism, they translate all those sutra into English. So now I think we are here in America, we have to read uh, English style, English edition, the, the, the different language. And so you'll be able to understand those sutra. And in America, I, I think it's totally different style of Buddhism society, totally different. It's, it's become like American Buddhism, okay? So hopefully, you know, Maybe only, I don't know how many percent of the population here believe in the claim, claim themselves, yeah, I am a Buddhist. I don't know how many percent. I don't know if even one percent or not, or more than one percent. I'm not sure. The, the whole world, about six or seven percent are Buddhist. The whole world. Whole world. But how about in America? America. One, two I think so. Yeah, I, I one day I, I kind of want to know how many how many people in America is really a, a, a claim themselves they are Buddhism. Maybe about one, one maybe one point five percent. It's so little, very little. Okay, but many many of them they would like to go to meditation. They want to have retreat. Okay. That, that this part of Buddhism, they loved it. They, they would, would go to the retreat, they would uh, study how to do the meditation because it's going to help them to deal with their life, deal with their career. Um, but they not really, they want to become like a Buddhist. No, not yet. So, so this is a new thing here. And so, Everything is changing. Everything is impermanent. 
all the factors are, are changing. So I don't know what is going to happen to America, the, the American Buddhism, I don't know what it will be like, okay? I only hope the right view will stay, okay? <laughs> People at least will keep the right view. Um, when we still have the right view, then there is hope, then, okay, then you will be able to do something right, and you are, you are not going to hurt yourself, you're going to protect yourself, and you're going to protect other people, okay? So this is how we are going to practice the Buddhism, okay? So this is the end of my talk today, okay? Now, do you have any comments and any suggestions and your experience you want to share with the people? You're welcome to do that now. Uh, so I looked it up. Um, it, is, <laughs> it is about 1% of the See? US population, uh -huh. but that translates to about 30 million people. So, not, not the, the totally, people. How, <laughs> what's the per population of America? It's over 300 million. Oh, so, so really, it's only 1%. Yeah, it's so, so little. How many people do the math? Please, again? 30 million. I think we had 80 more thousand last week, though, come in. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we just have to work work harder our, ourselves. We have no emperor to support us. I have a question. Yes. Since the Buddha says also, Buddha Dharma is very Catholic. Mm -hmm. But I should never change religion. Since Buddhism is a philosophy, I cannot continue my life with the practice in Buddhism. But at the same time, they say I should never change the policies to Buddhism. However, I do not go to the Catholic Church. I pray to God, but I follow the Buddhism. The right view, all the right things to do. I read the sutras and also I do the meditation. So, what do you think you are? I'm human being to follow the huh? right things. Okay, but you don't think you you want to become a, a Buddhist? You don't want to be uh, I think follow. I think I am the way to okay. be a Buddhist. My question to you is, should I change it completely? Well, here is this thing. If you have this right view from Buddha's teaching, right? You want to follow this, but you also pray to the God, that is not Buddhism. So you don't want to split yourself into two. You, you cannot. You become schizophrenia. But because it's uh, Odeweka was explained that you should never change. You said. Isn't it? And some sort of the Buddha says you should never change your religion. You never should change. I follow the Buddhism because it's a philosophy. It's not a religion. It's a completely thing. Ah uh, no, Buddhism also is a religion. Some people always say, oh, Buddhism is not a religion. It's a way of life. It is a religion too because you have you have your your Buddha there and, and showing you how you should behave and religion, you follow this teaching, become your way of life. So it, it's also, it's a religion. I heard about people say, it's not a religion. I'm so surprised. How come it's not religion? Tell me, how come it's not religion? Even the Dalai Lama said it's a philosophy. It's not only the philosophy. Okay. It's not only a philosophy. You don't have to practice philosophy, no. right? But religion, then you follow the teaching and become your way of life. You have your belief. You believe in, in, in the teacher. We call him our teacher. We don't call him the God, okay? It's our teacher. And so we follow this teacher's teaching and we put everything in our daily life so I, this is a, a religion. It's not just a philosophy. It's not. Okay. 
I, I don't want you to split into two. How difficult? How, how can you do that? It, it's so difficult to do to do I that. Yeah. Very difficult. difficult. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Or someone, could someone Google it? What is the, the definition of religion? <laughs> okay. What do you think? I'm just pointing to it. Just going to get Yeah, we ask Google. Uh, for sure. When every, when every time when the people do the survey or do whatever, the religion, Christian, Catholic, Muslim, re Buddhism, always have Buddhism. How come you say it's not religion? Okay, so the, the definition, the belief in and worship of a superhuman power, all powers, especially a god or gods. So the typical religions, the uh, definition is that people that believe in the superpower, that, something that. That's the. Uh, What's the source? Religion, Google. Uh, <laughs> right, it's the Oxford English Dictionary. But there are multiple Oxford. definitions. Um, the, third, the third definition down says a pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance. So I think Buddhism would fall into that category. Okay. It's a supreme being. But when you speak to an American, the excuse me, knee jerk reaction is religion equal external godhead, right? This is an American, a, a Western assumption. Mm -hmm. So when you have a discussion, that's what they think they're talking about. Mm -hmm. In my humble opinion. Yeah, uh, that's for. For Buddhism, if you study deep down, you know there are so many different beliefs. The belief in one God, believe in many, many gods, believe in no God. And what do you think about Buddhism? Does Buddhism believe in God? No. What does God mean? What's the definition of God? To tell you the truth, human being create this word G O D because there are so many phenomena, so many things we cannot explain. So we just put God. So we will be able to think, okay, everything is from God. But you, if you ask, 
Where does the God, who, who created this God? The God created everything. And so who created the God? You could say there's gods in other realms, though, right? The charlatismal realm, whatever, they all have different beings in charge of those realms of their gods, right? But they say that God created everything. Now tell me, then, then who created God? Mm -hmm. kind of good orderly direction. It got to be reasonable. You cannot tell me he can create everything, that God can create everything. Now, okay, now who create God? But I also find that... It's so good. it's not a very uh, re uh, satisfactory answer for many, many people. Okay, you can create this, you can create that, and who create you? So nobody create anything. It's just a lot of things get together. It's a cause and effect origination. That, that's what Buddha said. It, it's everything is from coming out from many, many different factors, many, many uh, material together. That's why it become impermanent. If, if there is something that you, you will be able to be there by yourself, you, you don't need anything, you are permanent. Tell me what is permanent? Have you ever seen anything is permanent? If anyone can just name one thing is permanent, then you can say, Buddhism is a bullshit. Wrong speech. Nirvana is permanent, right? Energy is permanent. Unchanging. <laughs> because you don't know yet. Some some here, <laughs> some right. <laughs> yeah, you don't know yet. Can I? Yes, yes. Can I? Can I add a little bit? Please. Maybe. I think. I think maybe we are too bound with the definitions, and definitions are bound by the ability of a human being itself. So right. when we study Buddhism, I think the best thing is we want to be bound from our own development to become better. So if you Buddha doesn't want to divide people, doesn't Buddha want to save all beings. So when you put boundary like religion, it become boundary. So the best thing is when we start up learning Buddhism, we want to get ourselves to be bound. When you have like maybe the master was trying to say it, when you if you can believe in God and also believe in Buddha, when you divide your focus is not there, so it's harder for you to improve yourself. But you divide and you feel guilt, it holds you back from growth. So the best thing if you want, you focus in one area. So there are many ways of defining things, but when we are bound by definition, it holds us back, then that's no good. If it doesn't hold you back, then it's okay. You keep moving. As you long, you keep moving. The compounding effect will come, then the one day they be enlightened, everything will be gone. It's just like a ship bring you, bringing you from here to the other side. But this ship, you need it. But when you come to the other side, you discard this, this ship. You don't need a ship anymore. So we are too bound with definition. So you search Google, you search with the latest chat GPT, bing, you're still within this phenomenal realms. Buddha is talking about something beyond phenomenal realms. So try not to get too bound by definitions. Once you're bound by definitions, you cannot achieve the other shot. If you we will start with this phenomenal realms. That's my two cents. Thank you. Uh, question on the uh, Zoom. Uh, Felici or David? What's the question? Okay. Oh, you're muted. Go ahead, you're muted. Please. Uh, they here. Pitch, go to that side. 
Can I? Uh, he Good morning. Okay, Good go morning. ahead. Yeah, um, I I have a question. Uh, what what did Buddha say about God or Creator? Did it seems I heard one time someone said he said that's not in his realm to talk about who is the Creator, but he's just here to educate us and make us aware of the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path and what the right way is for, for living. So my question to you is, what, what did Buddha say about God creation? It's Can someone explain that to me? Because I cannot hear it very clearly. I really don't know. The creator, I think. Yeah. Well, and did Buddha say anything specifically about um, yeah. a creator God? Oh, the Buddhism doesn't talk about the Creator. No, there is no such thing, God. Yeah, it's because okay. everything is nothing is permanent. Everything is composed by some other factors and become this this phenomena and this person, this this human being. So that's why we have the five aggregates. We are not just one one factor. Uh, we have so many different factors get together. So when these factors are, even one factor is changed, then the whole thing is changed. And that's why there is nothing is permanent, okay? And it's, nobody can create anything. Uh, of course, you can say, okay, I create this chair, I create the God, I create this, I create that. But it's that really you created it, It's not that you created because that thing will arise is due to a lot of different condition, different material. And when it's the time and the place and the situation is all together, then here comes happen these things. So it, it doesn't say, don't talk about the create. Create no nothing. Create sometimes we we think okay. If you really want to talk about create, you create yourself because your your speech, your language, your behavior, your way of thinking, uh, how you eat, all affect you. So you actually you create yourself. That's what I will say. Okay, for you to to understand better. Who create we ourselves? We create ourselves. We have our own karma. And who create this karma? We we do things, and, and when you do things, you talk, you speak, then here comes the karma. So actually, we create ourselves. And what's the God? I am the God. I create myself. If you really want to talk about God, okay? I hope you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> So if you read more uh, on the definition of religions, it also says not all religions are centered on the belief in God, God or supernatural force. So there are so many different yeah, religions. Different definitions, yeah. not just one definition. And when we talk about a definition, we want to look at this definition. We want to say who's who define this yes. definition <laughs> and how much do I want to believe in this definition? We need to use our brain. Okay, we don't just believe whatever other people said. So most important important thing is if you uh, listen to the Buddha's teaching, it tells you there is this karma, this sutra called Kanama Sutra, right? Yeah. Yeah. What does it say? Don't believe on anything unless you know to be true for yourself. Check it out yourself. Okay, so that that's what Buddha's talk about about this create, create, and when this place says, okay, somebody create somebody, and this place says, no one create anybody, and you're so confused, and they talk to the, the Buddha, Buddha say, okay, you, you check it out, you know, like uh, Lin said, you just go there, and you, you do things, and you find out yourself, okay, so don't believe anybody say anything, but you just have to, to, to test it, and you experience it and to then finally you'll be able to believe it. All right? Okay, so I think this is our conclusion, right? For today. <laughs>
<laughs> Great. <laughs> so all the definition, we need to test it. <laughs> we test the definition. Does it say right or wrong? Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now I'm getting old. All right. So we'll <laughs> end with uh, three bows to the Buddha, the Dharma, and Sangha. And one bow to Venerable Shalane.